2008 was a good year for Star Wars games. We got the exhilarating Wii lightsaber duels, the blockbuster Jedi Math, and the topic of this video, The Force Unleashed. Now, to explain a little bit more about where this title fits in with the Star Wars timeline, we need to examine a bit of Star Wars history. In 2008, Star Wars was still a Lucasfilm franchise, and while we got a lot of games based on the films, we also got a lot of games based on what Lucasfilm called the Expanded Universe, which was essentially the same overall timeline, but not considered canon by the film's standards. The Force Unleashed was one of these such games. However, in 2012, Disney acquired Lucasfilm and changed the Expanded Universe to the Legends Universe, completely separating these non-film-based stories to the films. So what does this all mean? Well, you should enjoy the game as a Star Wars-themed experience, but not consider the plot relevant for future Star Wars media. Now, the version we're playing today is the PC version with a twist, more on that later. However, for reference, the first time I played this game, I did so on the PlayStation 3. Now, the game was released on many other platforms, PS2, Xbox 360, Wii, and Nintendo DS, just to name a few. YouTuber Flandreau actually did an excellent job of exploring the differences between these versions, and I'll drop a link to his video below. Now, I said earlier that we're playing the PC version with a twist. Well, that twist is a fan-made 60 frames per second patch, as even on modern hardware, the game's underlying graphics engine caps the frame rate at 30 FPS. Now, there is a downside to this unofficial patch, where certain force powers create unusual behavior on items from time to time, the most notable being some of the non-organic items shooting into the sky when using force grip. Although, to be honest, it's something I only experience a handful of times in my entire playthrough. The decision to use this patch or not is absolutely going to be personal preference. I'm the type of person who will always select a high frame rate if given the option. However, if you do want to experience the game as it was originally intended, then the original is the way to go. Either way, I'll drop a link to the patch I used below. The overall reception of The Force Unleashed is probably best described as mixed, with the average score being about 7 out of 10. Entertainment Weekly even ranked it as the second worst game of 2008, and I'll be honest, while I don't think the game is perfect, I certainly don't think it's deserving of contention on a worst game list. And look, when it was initially released, I was a little bit put off by Darth Vader jumping around like a kangaroo in the first level, but reframing it in my mind all these years later as a Legends experience, these things don't really bother me anymore. All in all, I'd say that I probably think it deserved closer to an 8, but alas, I can't change history. Story-wise, I give the game a lot of credit, because the game delivers a story which is both believable and supportive of the game's unique mechanics. For example, the game effectively puts the player against both sides of the conflict, the Imperials and the Rebels, but it's done in a narrative context which makes sense for the plot. Now, the overall plot tells the story of the player, aptly named Starkiller, being Darth Vader's secret apprentice, visiting a variety of locations around the galaxy to undertake his master's bidding. Of course, things don't quite go to plan, and the story goes in a completely different direction from where it starts. For a relatively short game, clocking in at around 10 hours, it has a surprising amount of depth to the plot. And look, there are moments where some good old-fashioned suspension of belief is required in order to keep things moving along, but on balance, the overall story is really good and something which I think, in parts, certainly inspired future canon media. Before we continue, a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel. With that out of the way, let's ignite our lightsaber, prepare our Force grip, and head back to 2008 to remember The Force Unleashed. Now, the overall gameplay loop of The Force Unleashed follows a fairly tried and tested base formula. You enter a new level, battle your way through a largely linear path, and fight a boss. However, the game introduces a few unique mechanics which end up helping make the overall gameplay loop feel far more unique than the contemporaries that came before it. The first of these mechanics is the introduction of Force Powers. Now, when I first played The Force Unleashed, I had played games with Force Powers before, like the excellent Jedi Outcasts and Jedi Academy. However, neither of these games come close to emulating the experience that Force Unleashed delivers. In both of the Jedi games, while the Force Powers are a useful mechanic, barring some puzzle sequences, 
If you didn't want to use them in combat, you didn't need to. And it felt like the levels were designed as traditional shooter levels with the option to use force powers. In the case of the Force Unleashed, it feels like the levels are first and foremost designed for you to use the force powers. And combined with how the force powers interact so well with the game's lightsaber combat system, delivers a very cohesive combat experience. While there are several force powers you can use, the most frequent you will likely use is the force grip and throw, basically enabling the player to pick up anything or anyone that isn't nailed down and throw it or them, with realistic physics and environmental destruction. The main application for this power is combat, however it's also used in level progression and the completion of some objectives, and honestly the game needed to get this system right, and it does. There's a surprising amount of detail in the game to support this mechanic also. For example, when you're in a TIE Fighter hangar, you can throw items at stationary TIE Fighters and destroy them. If you're in an area with a window to space, destroying the window will create a vacuum and send shutters sliding down the window. The developers didn't need to implement this level of design to sell the game, but they did anyway, and it really shows the level of polish put into the game. Now it's worth pointing out that while you start the game out with the ability to grip and throw using the force, a lot of other force powers, like lightning or shield, are unlocked as the game progresses, along with a skill tree which I'll get to shortly. The way in which these unlock are also tied to the difficulty curve of the game. For example, the first time you encounter enemies who use flamethrowers, you unlock a force ability to shield yourself. When you encounter enemies who can fly, you unlock an ability to throw your lightsaber, and so on. This is really good pacing, and in my opinion, balances progression with making the player feel more powerful, something which is not always easy to do. The other unique mechanic is the lightsaber combat, which to be fair is more of an evolution of other lightsaber based games. However, this iteration has a lot of added depth in terms of learning new moves and combos, which can be used against your enemies with different foes requiring different attacks to successfully defeat. Like with the force powers, the game needed to get this right, and it absolutely does. What stands out here is the overall combat fluidity of using the lightsaber. You can enter a room of 10 people and effortlessly engage in combat with all of them in a very seamless way, without ever feeling overwhelmed. By the same token, you can move from engaging ground troopers to something like an ATST, all without much of a pause. Now, I mentioned that there is an upgrade tree system, and this is where you can customize your playstyle a little bit. By earning experience points to spend through combat or finding special power-ups hidden throughout the levels. Essentially, the game has four progression systems. Firstly, there's force powers, with things like force push, force lightning, and so on, with each spear you unlock opening up a new power-specific ability. Next up is force talents, which is effectively passive buffs, things like increasing your maximum health, maximizing the force power bar, power regeneration, and so on, again, with each sphere unlocked, upgrading the ability. Then there's force combos, which is more of a yes or no unlock for specific combat combinations that leverage both the force and the lightsaber. Think Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat here. Lastly, there's the lightsaber progression, which lets you upgrade your lightsaber with different power crystals, delivering different benefits, such as improved reflection or attacks having the chance to siphon health from an enemy. Oh, and there's also the ability to change the color of your lightsaber, as well as your costume as you progress. So if you want to relive some of the more memorable moments in Star Wars history, like Darth Maul cutting down Stormtroopers, or C-3PO turning to the dark side, there's certainly options for that. Now, alongside these new mechanics, the game is supported by the usual third-person camera and control, and for the most part, both of these are very good, with one notable exception I'll come to shortly. The camera is controllable for the majority of the adventure, meaning that you can adjust it on the fly to suit your current situation, which works really well and certainly contributes to that combat fluidity that I mentioned earlier. Likewise, the control is also very well done, with the game feeling most natural for me using a controller, with the default button mapping doing a great job of enabling easy access to whatever control I needed. One of the things I will say is that while the game includes quick time events, they are all done really well and have a very generous timer on them, at least on the medium difficulty setting, meaning that you can actually enjoy the visual spectacle that's being displayed as opposed to having to lock your eyes to the base of the screen. Now, while I enjoyed the majority of the game, there are some areas which I don't think were as well executed as the others. The first one is going to be contentious, and I fully acknowledge that this may be a matter of personal preference. 
But for me, the first level which sees the player take the role of a fully powered up Vader, while narratively well done, sees the game start off at a somewhat unusual pace, with few of Vader's abilities actually explained, which can lead to a sense of the player feeling overwhelmed. And to be honest, I think this stands out more because of how brilliant the pacing is in the game after this level. And look, I don't have the perfect answer as to how I would have solved this, perhaps by putting more of a lightsaber combat focus on Vader and less of a more complex force ability focus. I don't know. Like I said, this one is going to be personal preference. Although something which I don't believe I'm alone in disliking is the camera positioning during boss fights. Now, I said earlier that the camera was really good, and when you have control of it, it is. However, during boss fights, a type of auto camera takes over and aims to provide a more cinematic experience. The problem here is that while it often looks impressive, it doesn't always translate to an impressive gameplay experience. Particularly if there are mini boss fights within the boss battles, you can become obscured behind them, leading to some cheap damage. Honestly, I get what they were going for here, and to the game's credit, sometimes it works, but more often than not, it was a source of frustration as opposed to innovation. There are some other minor grievances, like how traversal and clipping is handled through narrow passages, but all things considered, I think the gameplay was, and still is, a lot of fun. For a game released in 2008, the presentation qualities still shine remarkably bright in modern times. This is due to a combination of the art style used and the level of care given to portraying the Star Wars universe. Character design and animation work are both really good and help bring the story to life through the seamless transition from cutscene to gameplay and vice versa. Likewise, the environments are all richly detailed, with each environment having that unique Star Wars feel of whatever location it's portraying, while offering up an appropriate sandbox to use all of the game's unique mechanics. Probably my only criticism around the environments is the reuse of some throughout the game, with some missions taking the player back to places previously explored, and while the areas within these environments are subtly different, I would have liked the opportunity to visit even more new locations. The menus are all fairly basic, and the PC version definitely has the telltale signs of a console conversion, however this doesn't really impact its usability. In terms of general performance and stability, I didn't really encounter any issues, except for one odd case of continuing to show that I was on fire, despite not actually being on fire or taking damage from it. Certainly not game breaking and more so amusing, and it was quickly resolved with a respawn. Sound design is excellent, with many of the well-known Star Wars themes being used throughout the game, really helping to sell the immersion into the Star Wars universe. There are also some tunes created specifically for the game, and they are also excellent. And while I'd love to showcase them here, the speed in which Disney would copyright strike me would rival that of the Falcon making the Kessel Run, so you're just going to have to use your imagination, or possibly your search bar. The other elements of the audio, like voice acting, are also of a high quality, and give off appropriately AAA title vibes. Perhaps my only criticism is that Vader's voice sounds a little too high-pitched, given it wasn't voiced by the legendary James Earl Jones, but I'm honestly nitpicking here, and what's here in sound design is really good. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, you should be able to tell that I feel that while not perfect, The Force Unleashed is a very solid entry in the Star Wars gaming franchise. The game delivers on the hallmarks of a third-person shooter, while taking several risks, most of which paying off, to create a very satisfying experience. For me, the third-person lightsaber genre started with the Jedi series, arguably Jedi Knight initially, and has been evolving ever since, with The Force Unleashed serving as both an evolution and an experiment as to what was possible, likely helping shape the more modern Jedi games we have today. If you're a Star Wars fan, this is virtually a must-play, and if you're the type of person who likes third-person shooters with a melee focus, then I'm sure you'll also enjoy what's on offer here. But that's enough from me. Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.